suffering with everything. And you can tell, you can tell right away he had a career as a political consultant. Uh, Richard Army, Dick Army, one must, it is true, forgive one's enemies, but not before they are hanged. About Janet Reno, a new, <laughs> a new broom, a new broom sweeps clean, but an old broom knows where the dirt is. And last, and last but not least, O.J. Simpson. The jury consists of 12 persons chosen to decide who has the better lawyer. <laughs> oh, I love it. Here's, Wonderful. We'll see you, folks. Wait, take care of yourself. Bye -bye. I'll talk to you. 1-800-572-8255 is our number, and uh, there'll be O.J. Simpson jokes, I promise you this, uh, unending forever. Not just for your lifetime, forever. Too much material there to overlook. Our number, 1-800-572-8255. I want you to call my friends at JCH Entertainment, ask them about their kudzu report. This list, this list, all all the videos that they have uh, available, uh, from uh, the, the goat man to uh, coon hunting to quail hunting, uh, even got a good one on the World Series of coon hunting. Every everything, it is just a lot of fun. Herbs, roots, and remedies. Call and get them to send you a copy of this so you can pick out your favorite. One eight hundred five six eight eight three four eight. One eight hundred five six eight eight three four eight. I'd rather not know. Every year, thousands of women talk themselves into not getting a mammogram. No news is good news. They think if they don't know, it won't happen to them. What you don't know can't hurt you. To some degree, they're right. Eight out of nine women will not develop breast cancer over their lifetime. The peace of mind alone makes a mammogram worth it. My doctor never told me. But if your doctor hasn't brought it up, ask. Because a mammogram may give you the earliest possible warning and that may give you the greatest chance for saving your life. So call 1-800-ACS-2345. I won't do it. I'm too scared to find out. The only thing you have to be afraid of is ignorance. Get a mammogram, because early detection is the best protection. Call 1-800-ACS-2345. This message brought to you by the American Cancer Society and the Ad Council. Well, that's good. <laughs> Got a couple questions. Me for you. either. <laughs> <laughs> Got a couple questions for you. All right. Were you aware that uh, Louis Grizzard's daddy, the older man Grizzard, once taught here in Blue Ridge? Yes, I was. I didn't know. Were you aware of that or not? Uh, I got too smart for school and quit the first six weeks of my junior high school. Well, I had to teach you, wasn't it? Hey, yes, sir. <laughs> And uh, Mr. Grizzard came here around Christmas time of 1954. Uh-huh. Or 53. Yeah. Okay, about 1953. Uh, a friend of mine that, that uh, graduated with the last class to graduate from Blue Ridge in 1955 was at my house while ago, and uh, we were talking about that. Mm -hmm. Now, your second question. Do you know, besides the Arabians and stuff, uh, who worships the camel camel who worships a camel yeah who who uh, a camel is a good symbol to no a sober alcoholic because he can go so long without taking a drink oh okay, <laughs> okay. just 
a bit of trivia for you, lady. <laughs> they don't really worship you. They're just jealous. <laughs> uh, no, they ain't jealous. Uh, uh, he's a symbol of, uh, of of success to them. Well, that's good. Uh, but just wanted to, I hadn't talked to you in a while, and, and since me and my friend was talking about you this morning, just wanted to call and tell you, stay warm. All right, buddy, you do the same. And what kind of forecast you getting up there? Uh, well, they say they may be some bad come in here tonight. All right. Well, good luck to you. Same to you, Luddy. Same talk, to you. Talk to us again, old friend. Make it a good day. Bye-bye, buddy. Bye-bye. 1-800-572-8255. Visit, visit Colonel Poole's Barbecue in East L.J., Georgia, and see the world-famous Pig Hill of Fame. Let's talk to Ed in Knoxville, Tennessee. Ed, y'all had a little mini blizzard this morning, didn't you? Well, so, hello, I'm from uh, Squatchy Valley, north of Chattanooga. I just live here in Knoxville now. Mm -hmm. It's a Cherokee name, means hog trough, mountains on both sides. All right. <laughs> you, you were talking about cowboys a while ago. Yeah. Did you know that Tom Mix was a sheriff down in Marion County, Tennessee in 1928? No, didn't know that. They had labor trouble down there. They were, they were trying to break the strike, see? Yeah. And they sent for Tom Mix. He served about, two year, about a year down there. No, I didn't know that. I, I, I was I, I was in the horse business up in the county. My daughter was on E Hall mm -hmm. for Buck Owens, and and I I lived. I'm going to, I'm going to college. Though, 72 years old. Good for you. Look at what happened. You seen this show on TNN Club Dance? Yeah. Well, I was on that. I danced with a 22 year old girl, and I went home and told my boy. I said I danced with a 22 year old co-ed. He said, Dad, that's like that dog running that car. We're gonna do it if he caught it. <laughs> Well, you were talking about Johnny Mac Brown? Uh-huh. I think he played in Rose Bowl in 1932 for Alabama. Uh, I don't know what year it was. Believe, is he a 28 or 32 one? It was uh, way back there, yeah. you heard of the Scopes trial, have you, in Dayton? Yes, I have. Muggy trial? Uh-huh. Hey, Clarence Darren up on down there. Uh-huh. Well, this old lawyer from Ben McKenzie from Dayton had a rough day. He went home, went to bed drunk. His wife come in there and says, oh, well, Lord, help this drunk lawyer. He jumped up and says, hey, don't tell him I'm drunk. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'll be on TV in February. You've never seen me, but they'll interview me. Uh, who's going to interview you, Ed? Phil Campbell, who used to be on Hee I knew his daddy, Archie. Uh-huh. I met Archie when he used to play for $50 at the schoolhouse. Yeah. But uh, I, I, I'm going to be on there in uh, in uh, February, probably. They call me Wendy Ed. I don't know why. Do you, Ludlow? I can't imagine. I, I can't... cannot imagine, but I hope you'll call us back soon. Well, listen, I, I, I just picked you up yesterday, and I had a heck of a time getting your number, but I've got it. Good. What time of day are you on? I'm on at, I'm on at uh, nine, 9 to noon. I'm, 9 to noon. Yeah, probably, uh, I'm not sure what time we're on in Knoxville, but about that. No, no. That, that's Eastern time, yeah. You've got time for one more story? If it's short, yeah, I'll go ahead. Well, Jesse, Frank James was in the with William Chris C. Contrell. And my grand great grandfather was with Bedford Forest. They met over West Tennessee. Uh huh. And after after the war, they raised the place in, in Minnesota, and they had to got all shot up. And they come, Frank and Jesse hid out in Waverly, Tennessee, just north of, west of Nashville. Uh huh. And that, that, this uh, this was told to me by about 90 year old black man. My grandfather didn't tell me about. It. They rode into Pike, were looking for W. R. Pope, and they went down to his house and they, and they looked at his cattle. See, they were posing as cattle buyers. Uh huh. And uh. They paid him a thousand dollars in gold, and the next week he's supposed to go back and get the cattle. And they robbed the Huntsville Alabama Bank, as usually as the front, see. Uh -huh. But my great grandfather rode to Carney, Missouri, from Pikeville, Tennessee, to Jesse's funeral. Huh? Interesting, interesting family, interesting history. I'm glad you called, big boy. Well, uh, I'm, ta I'm, go I'm taking that's what I'm taking is Tennessee history and. Uh, in, in uh, UT here. Oh, good for you. My family settled here in 19, 1780 in East Tennessee. Uh huh. And Robert E. Lee's uncle was my great grandfather. Uh -huh. Great great grandfather. All right. You want my autograph? Wendy, I can't wait to get your autograph or to see you on television. You take care of yourself. I'm not Marshall Handy now. I'm no drugstore cowboy. I'm real, real cowboy. I know you. Don't tell Marshall I said that. I'll be careful. But, but good to talk to you, Lord. All right, buddy. You take care of yourself. I'm wow. <laughs> 1-800-572-8255 is our number. It is Friday. And I want to <clears throat> remind everybody, particularly you Atlanta Braves fans, fans out there about uh, the Marshall Man Fund. Marshall was, the, uh, was, of course, the stadium announcer there for many, many, many years. And uh, now Marshall's having a bad time. He is uh, real sick with cancer. And uh, some folks have got together and started the fund trying to help him with some of his medical bills. So you send whatever you can afford to the Marshall Man Fund. It's the Marshall Man Fund, Post Office Drawer F, Griffin, Georgia, 30224. Marshall Man Fund, Post Office Box 
post, I'm sorry, post office drawer F, Griffin, Georgia, 30224. A good guy who finds himself in some need of help, and I hope you will respond to, to that. Marshall Man Fund, P.O. Drawer F, Griffin, Georgia, 30224. Ludlow and Denny will be right back. You stay with us. so she can raise her kids in a decent neighborhood. A 26-year-old drug dealer, a new neighbor, looking for new customers. At stake, her children. Whose side are you on? You can help the community organizations that can help her. Call us at 1-888-544-KIDS or online at kidscampaigns.org. We're fighting for the children. Whose side are you on? A message from the Coalition for America's Children and the Ad Council. Hi, this is Tommy Newsom. Oral cancer is one of the six major preventable cancers. Yet this year alone, another 30,000 people will be diagnosed with the disease. One and a half of them will survive beyond five years. You can help prevent oral cancer. The bottom line, don't use tobacco products. They're all harmful. This is Joan London with a message for new parents. During the time that primary teeth are erupting, your child may have sore or tender gums. Gently rubbing your baby's gums with a clean finger, a small, cool spoon, or a damp gauze pad can be soothing. Contrary to popular belief, teething does not cause a fever. If your baby has a fever while teething, you should call your physician. This is a message from your local dental society and the American Dental Association. Every time with some travel tips. Uh, pardon me, sir. Say, hey, aren't you... A uh, crime dog. Yes, I recognize the, the pause. Is that your wallet in your hip pocket? Uh-huh. No good. Pickpockets love hip pockets. Oh. Put it in your front pocket or briefcase. Oh, yeah, sure, really. And hang on to that laptop computer. Put it down and someone else can pick it up. Hey, hey, you know, you're full of... Good advice, McGrath. Just remember it. Put your wallet in a safe place, watch your bags and valuables, and you'll be helping not uh, take a bite out of crime. A public service message from the U.S. Department of Justice, the Crime Prevention Coalition, and the Ad Council. with Georgia, my buddy Jim on the radio. Hello, James. Love that music, Ludlow. A little toe tapper there, <laughs> wasn't it? Yeah, it certainly was. Uh, we're bracing up, waiting on that cold weather you're sending us. 
Yeah, are, are, are they forecasting cold weather for it, Brunswick? It's coming, uh, probably over the weekend. Oh, wow. I listen with interest at the gentleman talking about Audie Murphy mm -hmm. earlier. Mm -hmm. I, too, am a big fan. I read everything I can get about Audie. Of course, he, everyone knows he was the most decorated soldier of World War II and probably all the wars, the modern wars. Yeah. Back in the Civil War, it wasn't uncommon for an individual to have two medals of honor, medals of honor so they would uh, outrank Audie, I guess. But, um, incidentally, you might not know this, uh, 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 Custer, George Custer, was very jealous of his brother Tom because uh, Tom had two medals of honor. I had no idea. Yeah. And, and there's something that I've, I've been trying to find out. The entrance road to Fort Benning, Georgia, is named Custer Drive. When you get off of the four lane going into Fort Benning, mm -hmm. it's Custer. And I would be willing to bet, I don't know this, but I would be willing to bet that that road is named after George Custer's brother that had two medals of honor. I wouldn't be surprised either. I would like, but I bet if anyone I, knows, I would like to know if that's true or not. I bet folks who drive on it every day don't know that. I bet it, I bet 99% uh, of the people that get off and get on that road, get off the inter, uh, the, you know, the car and see there, mm -hmm. and get on that road, think that it's named after uh, Custer's last stand, and yeah. it might be. But I bet it's named after George. But the reason I called you about Audie Murphy, I'll now, be very brief. His brother, his brother wasn't named George. I'm, no, his brother's named Tom. Oh, Tom. Tom, and he had another brother named Boston. Yeah, but I think Tom is the one with two medals of Okay, honor. okay. Uh, I went to Audie Murphy's grave in Arlington. Mm -hmm. Very impressed. It's only, a, if anyone goes to Arlington would like to see it, it's only about two, or, well, within 200 feet of the uh, tombs of the unknown soldier. And it's... And unlike other famous people in Arlington, he doesn't have a big monument or anything, even though he was the most decorated soldier of World War II. He has a regular GI headstone, mm -hmm. Medisha headstone, uh, just like all the other uh, troops. And his headstone is at the end of the road, right next to the pavement. It's the last headstone on the road, just like all the others, except there's a lot of writing on it. <laughs> Oh, of yeah. all of his, uh, yeah. all of his medals. Yeah, uh, qu quite a character. Yeah, quite and character. one thing that is strange, uh, that, and as much as I've read this about him, I didn't know it, but it says Major Otto Murphy. Yeah, somebody. The first I heard about that was when the, in the last six months, uh, and somebody said he had stayed in the reserves for a long time and uh, and become a, become a major. Mm -hmm. Well. I thought the I thought the gentleman that called in might be interested to know about that great. Very thank good. Thank you. Very good. I thank you, Jimmy. Take care, buddy. I'll talk to you. Let's uh let's go to Stylesboro and talk to the Happy Cooker. Hello, Happy. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How you doing? I'm fine. I have absolutely no purpose in calling other than to let you know I'm still alive. Well, that's that's important. I knew you'd be pleased. Uh -huh. And to say happy birthday to Spanish. Yes, yes. Oh, um, Pete in Spanish and their little hairy son named Spagnum, I guess, uh -huh. came to visit me at a craft show in the summer after you let me promo it on the air. Yeah. So the least I can do is remember her. That's right. On, on, uh, we we'll refer to this as her 21st birthday, although Pete blurted out that she was 34. Mm, yeah. it's like me. Yeah. This year I'm 39 and next year I'll be 39. Good. Mm -hmm. That's your story, and you're sticking to it. Damn right. No <laughs> sense in changing. Okay. Um, I just was checking in, saying hey. All right. Been too busy with Christmas and catering and all that stuff. Oh, to... I bet they covered you up at Christmas yes, time. Yes, they did. And thank God it's the end of the chocolate-covered cherry season. <laughs> because I have three old doors in my house, and I don't want to remodel again. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and my poor 91-year-old mother fell and broke her wrist at Christmas. Ooh, didn't need that. So, uh, we've been quiet. Cooker, you take care of your sweet self and call us when you can. Yes, dear. We love you. Bye. Bye-bye. Here is Confusky. Confusky, we were talking about you a little earlier. Where are you? Well, yeah. I, I just got back in from some business, um, and I picked up on the last couple of callers. Now, I guess one of them stole, stole my thunder. I was going to ask you a question. Um... About Audie Murphy. All right. A trivia question. All right. What was his middle name? I don't know that I've ever heard his middle name. Uh, I hadn't either until I looked it up. What was it? Leon. Aubrey? Uh, Aub yeah, Leon. 
Yeah. Audie Leon, okay. And um, I, I was also reading about him. Um, of course, the, the last I heard, according to the encyclopedia, uh, he was uh, he was just a lieutenant when he got out. He was when he got out. Yeah. I, he apparently spent some reserve time. So what's been going on today other than that? Now, somebody called and, and was commenting on your comment the other day about uh, the fact that uh, that your son was uh, not a very good reader until you took the time right. to, to sit down and, and teach him yourself. And, mm -hmm. they, and they said, did you think there's any chance that that was because all his teachers previous to you coming along had been women? You know, I never thought about that. I never thought about that, but that's probably the truth. That's probably true. But you know, what, I, what would you base that on? Their, their basic inferiority? Yeah, inferior. In, they're all inferior to man. It's just like, I, you know, I got two squirrel, squirrels out here. One's what not, and the other one's why not. Mm -hmm. And uh, I built them a little golf course out there. And she chases them all the time. He's up all the time trying to get rid of her. You built a golf course for squirrels? Yeah. And, and, and you want to talk about women being inferior? <laughs> well, no, it's a little bitty golf course. I see. And I got, I got these little flags. They got, uh, they got one, two, three, four, five uh, holes that straight, straight holes, mm -hmm. and I got uh, four dog legs. Okay. Does, uh, does your wife know that you think she's inferior? Oh yeah. In a heartbeat. <laughs> it's where, just, it's just like this well, morning. Where, where, where is she now? Continue. She's working. Now. Uh, and where are you? I'm at home in a bed. Okay. Where I stay every day. Okay. All right. It's just like this morning. The phone rang, uh -huh. and she says uh, that she, we both heard it, and the phone's next to me. Uh -huh. And uh, she says, if that's the company want me to come in early, tell them I've gone on to town. I said, at 2 o'clock in the morning, I answered the phone. I said, sure, she's here. She'd be, be glad to come in. <laughs> You're looking for that old time, wasn't you? Yes, sir, buddy. <laughs> I, I can't afford all the, uh, you know, all the food I need to eat, but she don't work hard enough. That's right. I understand. Uh, it, but Ludlow, you know, you have to go back in history uh, to see where women belong. Now, you take exactly the Chinese had the perfect idea. Tie their ankles together and keep them about three feet behind you. Does that, does that work at your house? Why, well, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it's just like, you know, it, here's, here's an example. I got mad at my wife. Yeah. And, uh... What'd you get mad at her for? Uh, about potato salad. Mm-hmm. What about it? She didn't put enough mayonnaise in it. Oh, okay. No wonder you were furious. Oh, God. I put, I put three notes up. Uh-huh. One on the refrigerator. You wrote her a note? Yes, sir. Uh-huh. And I said, if this ever, ever happens again, you won't, you will get more than just a note. What did that mean? You gonna send her a telegram? <laughs> <laughs> no, it just means that uh, you know you, you shape up and ship out. And now, I now, wait a minute, now, now wait a minute now. I say, I, if I, she I, ships out, who's gonna be out making the living? Oh, that's all right. I, listen, Ludlow, yeah. I went through 30 years of a marriage, and I traded that that wife in for uh, a 30-year-old because uh -huh. she was getting close to 60, and I'm, of course I'm almost 60. Yeah. And I traded the old one in for a 30-year-old. Uh-huh. And uh, I told her in a heartbeat, I said, you, you know, you get too smart with me, and I'll trade you in for a pair of 20s. Did, uh, you, you ain't wired for 220s. Uh, have, uh, have you ever heard of a guy named John Wayne Bobbitt? Yeah. I want to do a little, I want to do a little reading about that. I got to get out of here, Confuski. You take care of yourself. We'll be right back after this. He's been called the Mark Twain of our time, and the Fun Seekers Network is pleased to offer some of his funniest bits. The best of Louis Rizard is now available by mail order. Send your check or money. Uh, excuse me. How about that? That better? That's much better. Can you imagine anybody being inferior to Kofuski? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bozo, what a line. I know why he left the notes. Why? He's afraid she'd knock him out if he told him. <laughs> oh, maybe it. Uh, you know, if I'd have got, if I'd have been a lady who worked hard on potato salad and I got three notes about it, I would have said, don't worry, because the next time you get potato salad will be the day you fix it. I believe I'd have filled a tub of potato salad and <laughs> held him under it. <laughs> so, how about that? That's not bad, <laughs> Oh, Bozo. I heard a rumor today, Lalo. Oh, yeah? I was talking to Jim Small earlier today. Uh-huh. And uh, he said that the only reason that Radio Ray was going down to that TV show, yeah. he was going to streak. Oh, really? Yep. 
national television. Did he know what time? Uh, Jimmy gave him $100 for the uh, bail money. Uh-huh. And uh, he's going to have a sign painted on his back. Listen to me, I'm Radio Ray. <laughs> Well, I gotta watch it now. I gotta watch it. That'll be cool. Yeah, it will be cool. I won't tape it. Yeah, do that. Do that. We'll show it on the radio. It's gonna be good. Uh huh. I hear little naked feet running. <laughs> Are you supposed to run totally naked or just uh, with, with with tennis shoes on? I think it's optional, depending on your preference. Uh, I, if, I, if I was gonna do it, I'd want, I want the fastest thing possible I could have on my feet. I got that right. Yeah. You probably don't let naked one there. Running naked in the middle of the day. Yeah. That'll be his theme song. I think it'll work. Running yeah. naked like they, uh, you know what? You know what's going to happen if he does that, don't you? What's that? They're going to probably make him a news anchor at CNN. Yeah. Now he's overqualified. <laughs> <laughs> All right, big boy. I got to go. You take care of yourself. See ya. I'll talk to you. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bozo Roberts. Let's go to Leesburg, Georgia, and talk to Tony. Hello, Tony. Good morning, sir. Good morning, my friend. How you doing? Fine. Uh, I appreciate you talking to me. Thank I you. have, uh, several years ago, I had a book by, the author was Harold Babcock, and he was a professor at the, uh, one of the universities in South Carolina, and the name of the book was Jaybirds Go to Hell on Saturday, or on Friday, whichever it was yeah. supposed to be. In. Yeah. And I, uh, I lost the book, and I have looked everywhere from it. Do you have any knowledge of Havilah Babcock and his writings? No, sir, I don't. But let me tell you what you need to do. Uh, your bookstores, now particularly the large chain bookstores, are all, are all hooked together with publishers and everybody. And uh, e- even if it's out of print, it'll give you enough information on it where you might can track it someplace. Okay, I, I, I have tried that. I went to several in Atlanta and, and, and local bookstores here in Albany, Georgia. But uh, if you have no knowledge, I'll continue that route. Well, let me say this. Uh, uh, give me the name and the title again, and if somebody out there uh, can help us, I'm sure they'll call right in here because we've got great listeners who have uh, wide uh, reading interest. So give me the name of the book again. Jaybirds Go to Hell on Friday. Okay, and by... And uh, it's by Havila Babcock. Okay, what was it generally about? of products and packaging are now being made from the paper, plastic, metal, and glass that you recycle. But to keep recycling working, you have to buy those products. So when you pick up a package, read the label. Just make sure pudding is for all kinds of products. As long as they're pudding. Uh, this is Cindy saying for a free brochure on buying recycled. Call 1-800-CALL-EDF. Or 1-800-PUDDING. Come on. Oh, all right. 1-800-CALL-EDF. This message from the Ad Council, the US EPA, and the Environmental Defense Fund. Learn this exercise. First, look up at the sky. As far as you can see, it's our sky, America. Now, look down at the ground. That's our land. Of course, we have to defend it. And today, over half of that defense is provided by the National Guard and Reserve. So if you're an employer of Guard and Reserve members, when they say, boss, I need time off to serve, perform your exercise. Look up, then down, try it. Head up, head down, up, down. Thank you. A public service message from employer support of the Guard and Reserve and the Ad Council. For many years, the National Guard and Reserve have been an important part of our country's defense. And over the years, they've become more and more important. Until today, the National Guard and Reserve make up over half of all our armed forces. The National Guard and Reserve are vital to our nation's defense. So you'd better be ready when they come looking for you. Boss, can I have time off to serve? Give them the freedom to protect ours. A public service message from employer support of the Guard and Reserve and the Ad Council. And in spite of all the forecasts, the sun is still bright and shiny. No wind to speak of in Swanee, and it just looks like it's going to be a glorious day. Uh, but I'm still going to buy 
milk and bread. One never knows. All right, I have two quotes. Struggle is the father of all things. Struggle is the father of all things. Let me give you a couple of hints here. 20th century politician awarded the Iron Cross in World War I. That any help? 20th century politician who was awarded the Iron Cross in World War I. And the other one, I'm sick of carrying guns and beating up women. Movies should be entertaining, not bloodbaths. A couple of quick hints. He's an actor, and he was born in 1899. An actor born in 1899. Know either one of those? 1-800-572-8255. We're running very short of time here, so we're probably not going to get these, and I'll, I'll give this another minute or so, and then, then, then I'll just tell you. But I do want to tell you, <clears throat> be, be ready as a driver for this weather that they're talking about coming in here. And it's going to vary from place to place, but uh, the, the, the best way to be ready for it is to wear your seatbelts. That will very, very likely save your life. We hope. Let's go to Spartanburg, South Carolina, and talk to Philip on the radio. Hello, Philip. Hey. How you doing, Philip? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I pushed up the wrong note. This is not Philip, is it? No, this is the one up in Clayton, Georgia. Okay, buddy. I'm sorry. I punched the wrong button. You, you got an answer for us? Uh, yeah. Uh, I was uh, hearing a fellow earlier talking about it being a cowboy. Yeah. Well, I, I used to be a cowboy and uh, had another little home long time, but uh, I thought I'd ride one, you know, one day. Yeah. And I got on that thing, it got to kill me. Throw I you. was hollering and screaming, somebody get me off, and wasn't nobody paying me no attention. <laughs> and finally the manager of Walmart come out and unplug me. <laughs> you take care of yourself, I'll talk to you. Now we're going to talk to Philip. Philip, I'm sorry I shortchanged you. How you doing? Okay, that's all right. I'm fine. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Um, I was going to guess that the answer to the first one was Adolf Hitler. That's exactly right. And the second one, I'm going to, I'm taking a guess that's John Wayne. No, not John Wayne. All right. But a very good guess. All right. A very good guess. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Take care. Uh, let's talk to Tim in Dalton. Hello, Timothy. How are you doing? Hey there. How are you today? I'm, I'm doing. George Burns is the man. No, George, I'm sick of carrying guns and beating up women. Movies should be entertaining, not bloodbaths. You know who said that? I'm going to tell you. Oh, James, James Cagney said that. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah that, had, that had to be him. Because all of his early movies, he not only was beating up women, but he was carrying a gun. <laughs> That's true. He yeah. played the gangster. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good old movies, weren't they? Yeah. What kind of forecast you got in your area? Well, they call for possibilities of one to two inches of snow in the Dalton, Georgia area. They're kind of mealy mouth about this this but time, aren't they? I'm looking at my official weather window here. Mm -hmm. and nah, ain't no. gonna happen. Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> call, call the golf course and, and reserve a tee time. That sounds good. Atta boy. Hey, happy New Year, buddy. All right, thank you, sir. I hope to see bye you bye. soon. Bye bye. Had a good time today, gang. I hope you have. And uh, as I say, just use a little common sense with this weather. It's, it's kind of iffy. We might. And then again, we might not. But uh, if we do, you be ready. We will be right back with you Monday. And uh, we hope you will be here for the uh, kickoff of another week as we ease our way toward uh, the middle of uh, January. Ludlow and Denny and all the gang from the Fun Seekers Network. And what's most important about this weather, you leave your dial on your local radio station. Those are the folks who will tell you first. See you next week between 9 and whatever else you do today. You find somebody to be nice to.
Ludlow again. Just can't wait to hear Ludlow again. Well, I come up this year in Ludlow with my friends, and I can't wait to hear Ludlow again. No, I can't wait to hear Ludlow again. Ah, thanks. Oh, yeah, fun night. Yeah, buddy, we're having fun now on a Friday afternoon, or it's supposed to be afternoon, because it's going to be noon in about 10 seconds. This is AM 1300, WIMO in Winder, Georgia. It is now 12 noon. Time to make that mad dash for the door for lunch. And it's also time for ABC News. Here's the latest from ABC News. I'm John Bascom. The weather is not helping searchers in Michigan in the field where a Comair commuter plane fell out of the sky yesterday, killing all 29 on board. ABC's Tim Shell is watching the recovery effort. John, the recovery of the 29 victims will be complicated by the weather. Bone-chilling temperatures and wind-swept snow have turned the rural farm field where the plane came down into a frigid tomb. Along with the recovery of the victims, investigators are looking for all important clues into what happened here and finding the cockpit voice and data recorders could be a big help. John? ABC's Tim Shell. The weather is pretty awful throughout the Midwest. A blizzard in North Dakota has a wind chill of 80 below zero. Early County Deputy Sheriff Steph Mayer is telling people to stay inside. We need the people to um, listen to these advisories because it's, it's very dangerous. Some passengers on an American Airlines flight from Hawaii did a little flying around of their own inside the plane as it suddenly dropped 300 feet, sending people crashing into the ceiling. Ten hurt, six hospitalized. Back to the stand for O.J. Simpson in his civil trial in Santa Monica. Questioning under his own attorneys. John Lyons is there. John, there are a couple of other witnesses today before the main event. They need to finish up playing the videotape of Dr. Henry Lee's testimony, and then they'll follow that with a short reading of some testimony about a 10-hour delay in calling the coroner. Then comes O.J. Simpson. We expect a dramatically different Simpson from the one who testified in November. This time, he'll be questioned by his attorneys first, who will be trying to portray him as a warm, caring father who you just wouldn't believe could be a murderer. John? Hold on to your stocks. This morning's economic news that the unemployment rate is steady at 5.3% has Wall Street worried. As economist Alan Sinai tells us, when Wall Street gets worried, the stock market can do anything. I think it's very vulnerable, and anything can happen on a day like today. Minus 50, minus 100, minus 200, minus 20. I, I do think it's going to be significantly down. Now this. For your life vitamins, here is Chuck Yeager. First man to fly faster than the sun. I've been around for about 73 years. I still fly high-performance airplanes up at Edwards. But I have to take better care of myself. And that's exercise and taking vitamins. This is your life. Your life has proven release. And that vitamin is dissolved in your stomach and not passed on through your system. Your life vitamins. I am a living example of how they work. Available at CVS, Eckerd, and other fine stores. If you've been waiting for the right time to buy top name brand appliances, now's the time. And Sears is the place. Through Saturday at Sears, home appliances from brands like Whirlpool, GE, KitchenAid, Gen Air, Frigidaire, Hoover, Tappan, and Amana are all on sale. Get it now at Sears. Plus, when you get it now, Sears will throw in free delivery on all appliances over $399. For great savings on top name brand appliances and free delivery, get to Sears. Hurry, sell in Saturday. Free delivery with mail-in rebate. U.S. delivery only. See store for details. Another setback for the Russian space program. One of its space monkeys has died. Jennifer Griffin says it had just returned from a two-week orbit around the Earth. The monkeys returned to Earth Tuesday after a two-week spin through the galaxy. But one of the cosmonaut monkeys died during a set of routine tests as scientists tried to collect tissue samples from it. The trip was designed to test the effects of weightlessness on living organisms. The monkeys were set to retire to a local zoo after their trip. The space monkey's death is the latest in failures experienced by the struggling Russian space program, still reeling from an unsuccessful Mars launch that crashed in the Pacific Ocean in November. Jennifer Griffin, ABC News, Moscow. Former Senator Paul Sungus has been hospitalized for a liver problem and an irregular heartbeat. Doctors say there is no evidence that his cancer has returned. Russian President Boris Yeltsin will be in the hospital for yet a few more days. Yeltsin fighting pneumonia. John Baskin. ABC News. Variable amounts of cloud cover and windy today. You might see a couple of snow flurries, especially during the afternoon. Our highs will range from 40 to 45. Some snow flurries this evening, overnight decreasing clouds. Lows will be in the low to mid-20s. 
partly cloudy skies and cold on Saturday with a high in the lower 30s. And a chance of snow flurries on Sunday with high staying in the lower 30s. From the Weather Channel, this is meteorologist Mike Stenifer. The current temperature at WIMO is 40 degrees on the outside at AM 1300 WIMO in Winder, Georgia, where we have 40 degrees. Hey, big heat wave all the way up to 40 there. Four minutes after 12 o'clock coming up, we've got Paul Harvey News and Comments a couple of seconds away from now. And uh, coming up at 12.30, midday community calendar. Get you up to date with all the local news and uh, the items of interest going on around the area. That'll be coming up at 12.30. Time for Paul Harvey News and Comment, brought to you by the People's Bank. It takes years of sunlight and rain for a tree to grow. But more importantly, it takes a deep root system over the past 70 years, that is what the People's Bank has been developing in Barrow and surrounding counties. A helpful staff gives you personal attention with financial problems, services that meet your needs, and convenient locations, and solid roots in the community. The People's Bank stands out among the others 70 years of growing and never forgetting how important you are. Because of the People's Bank, people are our business. The People's Bank, with branches in Winder, Auburn, and Statham. Member FDIC. Come in and visit the friendly folks at the People's Bank today. Hello, Americans. This is Paul Harvey. Stand by for news. While something exciting has happened in the eyeglass industry, have you heard about that? This month, this year, January 4, Verilux introduced Verilux Comfort Polarized Lenses. That's right, your Verilux Comfort Lenses now come in sunglasses, and they're no ordinary sunglasses. These are a combination of the very latest in cutting-edge Polaroids technology and the triple-patented Verilux Comfort state-of-the-art design. Verilux Comfort Polarized lenses will not delaminate. They have an advanced anti-glare feature that helps keep you safe while driving. They have a 99% UV rating to keep your eyes protected from the sun. Verilux Comfort Polarized lenses have the world's most scratch-resistant coating to help your lenses last longer. Now, your eyes deserve the best, and here it is. Verilux Comfort Polarized lenses. Remember to be sure that you get the wearer's guide that contains the certificate of origin to verify that you're getting authentic Verilux Comfort lenses. Verilux Comfort, that's V-A-R-I-L-U-X. It's the lens. To locate your nearest dealer, telephone 1-800-VERILUX. V-A-R-I-L-U-X. 1-800-VERILUX. In Green Bay, Wisconsin, for Sunday's NFC Championship game, there will be one empty seat on the 50-yard line. It has been paid for and reserved for the ghost of Vince Lombardi. Sears is creating a boot camp for repairmen, a hands-on learning course to teach repair people without whom future technology has no future. Oh, our government's Bureau of Indian Affairs has been trying to win back the respect of our several tribes, but this won't help. The BIA cannot find $2.4 billion, part of tribal trust funds. The BIA's report to Congress says the money is not necessarily missing, it's just that they can't find it. And now the BIA wants Congress to appropriate hundreds of millions more of your dollars to replenish the tribal funds, which they have misplaced. More workers want to work in the United States every day. Maturing Americans become job age, plus immigrants, legal and other. So our economy has to keep humming, has to keep expanding to absorb them. Unemployment in December was 5.3%. That's the same percentage as the month previous. Though our dynamic economy created an additional 362,000 new jobs in December. In all of last year, 2.6 million new jobs were generated. In Detroit, by the dawn's early light, they began sorting the remains of that crashed commuter plane.